Okay, welcome to the Basic Computer Repair and Networking Unit 5 Networking Part 2 Presentation Lecture. Please make sure that you have the note guide that goes along with the presentation lecture so that you can take notes and use this as a study tool for upcoming assessments. After end of Part 1, we left off with topologies, and now we are going to move on to how networks communicate. So networks, networks do communicate uh, amongst computers, clients and servers that are on the network. Uh, for two or more computers to communicate, they must use the same system of identification and data transfer. Uh, data is divided into smaller units, which are called packets or frames, and we will talk about how um, these packets and frames get passed from uh, node to node. Uh, a packet is a small unit of data into which larger amounts are divided. What largest amounts? Larger amounts are divided for passage through a particular network. So how is data packaged? Before we can understand how it is distributed, we have to know how it's packaged. Data is sent across a network in the form of a digital pulse. Digital pulses represent binary and hexadecimal codes, which represent the data. So we go back to day one when we talked about the ones and the zeros and how data is represented within a computer system. A sequence number is attached to each packet of the data. It ensures the data will be reassembled in the exact order was transmitted, which means that data is not transmitted in the order that it needs to be received. It's going to be all jarbled up, and then the packet numbers will allow the receiving node to be able to order the data as it was received so that it can be transmitted, not so it can be transmitted, but so it can be deciphered. Now, the time it takes for data to arrive is influenced by a number of factors. First of all, the length of the route. Is it a long passing of data from one node to the next, the type of media and equipment that's being used, as well as the amount of data on the route. And we all know this because we have requested data through our networks and we have either been very, very impressed with the speed of the data transfer or we have been very disappointed with the speed of the data transfer. Now, protocols are what is used for networks. I'm sorry, protocols are what is used from computers to communicate with other network devices. So computers to be compatible of communicating with each other, they must use the same particular protocol. Before we know what that is, how can we, before we know how that works, we need to know what a protocol is. A protocol is a set of rules for formatting the data, stream transmission between two computers or devices, and for describing how to transmit data, usually across a particular network. A protocol suite is a combination of individual protocols, each designed for a specific purpose. So normally, data is transferred using a particular protocol, but a computer can receive data using multiple protocols. A list of common protocols that we might see when it comes to transmission of data over a network, a transmission control protocol slash internet or TCP slash IP, internet protocol version 4, IPv4, IPv6, link layer discovery protocol, LLDP, Microsoft link layer, topology discovery protocols, LLDP, Microsoft LLDP, Microsoft Network Adapter, Multiplexer Protocol, or Universal Plug and Play, or UPNP. We are going to focus specifically on the TCP that, uh, slash IP. Other protocols are Simple Service Discovery Protocol, SSDP, Net BEUI, FIP, or Fast Infrared Protocol, ATM, Asynchronous Transfer Mode, or vice voice over IP, also known as VOIP. Now, network media, this is the means by which an electronic signal is transmitted. So network media is normally transmitted a bunch uh, using three different types of cables, either a coax, twisted pair, fiber optic, and if it is not wired data transmission, now it is wireless. So an electronic signal can be transmitted via cable-based media or wireless media. The two types of wireless media include infrared and radio transmission, and we'll talk about RFID and other radio transmission protocols to transmit data back and forth wirelessly. Now the coax cable, also known as coax, consists of a core conductor surrounded by an insulator. The insulator is covered by a shield to either, either a solid foil or braided wire layer. Shield protects core from electromagnetic interference so that the data can transmit with less interference and uh, less distra nah, distraction, not the right word, less, less, uh, less roadblocks, um, I guess would be, would be a good word for that, which would corrupt transmitted data. Coax cable is difficult 
in which to work with. We'll look at pictures of what these look like as well. Coaxial cable was designed to be used as media for radio systems, hence the acronym RC for radio guide. Two types of coax cable, RG6, which is the one that's most commonly used. We see this when we connect our satellites or our, our cable boxes to our TVs. These are high frequency systems such as cable TV or cat TV. And then there's also the RG59, so for low frequency applications such as audio systems. Twisted pair cable is the most common choice for networking wiring, consisting of four pairs of conductors twisted around each other. This is also known as a cat cable. Two broad classifications of twisted pair, unshielded and shielded. Uh, the twists are necessary to eliminate crosstalk or other interference. Crosstalk is the imposition of a signal on one pair of conductors by another pair of conductors that runs parallel to it. Thus the twisted pair. Now if you take a look at twisted pair, the most common is like I mentioned before the CAT5. But before CAT5, there was CAT3 and CAT4, which didn't quite have the maximum speed of data transfer. But as you can see, we can get all the way up to CAT7 now, which is 10 gigabytes per second. That is some serious data being moved from one end of the network to the other. Fiber optic cable, often referred to as just plain old fiber, contains a glass or plastic center that carries light. There are advantages and disadvantages to this one as well. So advantages are increased security, greater resistance to corrosion, immunity to lightning strikes, decreased weight, and longer transmission distances per segment. A disadvantage is it's extremely expensive and it's increased difficulty of field installations. So to run fiber is going to take some time and obviously a significant expense. Two types of wireless media, infrared and radio transmission. This is how wireless signals get transmitted amongst devices. Three types of cable-based media, coax, twisted, twisted pair, and also fiber optic. Now, a variety of devices are used to create networks, common network devices used in a home or a small office network. You might see within these networks, network interface cards, wireless network interface cards, switches, routers, and even wireless routers. The network interface card, also referred to as a NIC card or a network adapter card or Ethernet card, this connects media, usually twisted pair, to individual network devices such as workstations or clients, file servers, and even printers. Each network adapter card has a unique media access code or a MAC address, which is a hexadecimal number programmed into the card's chip. So again, another example of how ones and zeros are used in order to transmit data and for different nodes on a network to communicate with each other. A router supports communication between different types of networks, for example, a home network and the internet. A wireless router is a combination of a wireless access point, switch, and router. And then a Wi-Fi protected setup, or WPS, is a standard developed by the Wi-Fi Alliance to make it easy to configure and secure, to configure secure access to a wireless router. So between, router is not just a router anymore. There is obviously a wireless router, a wired router, and even a Wi-Fi protected router. So the question becomes is if you are a networking professional and you are, put it, you are building a network, what type of router do I actually need to best fit my needs? A networking operating system, or NOS, provides communications between computers, printers, and other intelligent hardware on the network. The NOS is composed of software programs that provide security, user identity, remote access, and sharing of printers, sharing for printers and other devices. NOS is required to write, run a network. So even though we have an operating system to run our personal PCs in order to run a network, there also has to be an operating system in place there as well. The OSI model, when it comes to data transfer, there are seven different layers to describe how hardware and software should work together to form a network communication. Layer number one is the physical, layer two, data, layer three, network, layer four, app, I'm sorry, layer four, transport, layer five, session, layer six, presentation, layer seven, application. If you look at it this way, figure that if you go from seven to one, that is the user communicating with the network, and from one to seven is the network com communicating back to the user. So let's take a look at these different layers. 
The physical layer, most basic layer of the OSI model, is going to consist of cable and an adapter. It determines how electronic signals are carried. Then moving on to the data link layer, which describes the network's level of operation, packages, binary numbers into frames and or packets for transmission, then moves on to the network layer, which is responsible for routing packets of data from one network card to another across a large network, prioritizes also the transmission of the data. Once it gets to the transport layer, then we now have it being ensured that the data received from the transmission is reliable, and that it also is going to sequence the packets of data and resemble them in order so that they can be received and interpreted. Then moving on to the session layer, a connection is established between two different computers. Then we have a prov providing the system security based on a computer and the username and recognition. So there's authentication going on in the session layer. The presentation layer, which ensures character code recognition, responsible for converting the character codes from the originating computer to another form that can be recognized by the receiving computer. And the application layer, which is going to manage the network processes such as the file transfer, mail service, and file server database access, works much like a network browser. Network devices by, defined by the OSI model, we have defined by the OSI model with which they align. So which level or which layer of the OSI model do these devices fit? And then the definitions of the router, switch, and hub are based on how they deliver network data. And this concludes unit number five, part two, presentation lecture on networking. Please make sure that you have completed the note guide. And if you need to, go back and revisit any slides so that you do get the notes so that your note guide can be used as a study tool for upcoming assessments. I'll see you next time we meet in class.